last year was pretty intense. Coming full swing from last year's event, you know, we started planning last year's event at last year's event and, uh, you know, planning for this year. And uh, it just never, never ends, never ends, you know. And uh, it came together well. We had some big namers come out, a lot of local guys come out and put it down. There were some really awesome things made here and, uh, you know, to help the kids. And, um, you know, just that's what it's about, helping kids. We're at Unbroken Glass right now um, in Peoria, Illinois. Um, there's a great scene of lamp workers in just Peoria. And I feel like every year the Midwest is getting new names, more people are getting into it. You're teaching your friends and it's just booming. Uh, Coyle, Abe, they both came in from out of town, which I'm obviously big fans of their work. This year, um, compared to last year, it's really blown up, and we're hoping for even bigger next year. Uh, Luke the Drifter, um, I'm a glass blower. It's been working for a long time now. I was on my way to Austin and didn't make it. <laughs> found a good spot to be, found a good vibe, and uh, kind of stuck here. Love it. We brought a bunch of material down to throw into the project and rep our company, help Smile Train, help the community, and a whole bunch of my friends here that I haven't seen for a while. It's just all around good time. I love Peoria. It's a good place. People came from all over the place. I mean, True drove halfway across the country to be here. You know, there are people that flew all over, had other stops to be making, and still made it here no matter what, you know, and that's just, that's just amazing how we as a community can come together and really do something positive. Relative to most of these other projects and the photos that I've seen, they're in a huge space, you know, and we're, this is a really nice facility, but it's not accommodable for 50 plus glass blowers. but obviously over the last couple of days, at least 50 glass blowers have been thrown down. And we had stations set up outside, out the door, every bench plus extra spaces filled up this year. So can't wait for next year, you know? God only knows, we'll be running three or four liquids and try and have seven people set outside. We may need a, a you know, circus tent to house everybody. Who knows? We'll see. Over and grow, stuff like that. Uh, well, as being the founding member, a lot of the, I won't call them burdens, but you know, what have you, so were on me, and it's good to have some team members that I can really count on and trust to have this project go where it's going and to ultimately help as many kids as possible. Nothing would be anything without people coming together. So to have people connect, to have people that don't know each other connect, to come for a good cause, no competitions, no egos, you know, just ultimately helping in the long run, doing what we do, doing what we love, you know, it, it, that's why. You know, the community as a whole, we all love each other, we all support each other, we're all local guys somewhere, so, you know, it all counts for something. It's showing people that we're not a bunch of losers sitting in our garage doing nothing, you know, I mean, it shows that we're trying to do something better for our community as opposed to just ourselves, you know, I mean, which I think is good. Uh, the Smile Train, Belle Isle Aquarium, Meals on Wheels are all deserving, you know, charities that help people on a national level. Cliff Pallets runs in my uh, girlfriend's side of the family, and so uh, I just thought it'd be really nice to come out and try to raise some money and, uh, you know, blow glass in front of people and try to show people also what I do. Oh man, it just gets me going. It's it's my everything, you know. It's uh, I mean, this is what I dreamed of, you know, being around all these guys and doing this thing. It does a lot, man. It builds up a lot of character for us. It builds up a lot of character in our work. Uh, you know, it's huge influence, you know, getting to be around these guys. I mean, I look up to a lot of artists that are here working, so I mean, that to me is, you know, does a lot for me and my work. Me and Coyle, we made a monkey collab. Uh, he made the head and I made, you know, uh, the can of it, the body. A the hole in the ceiling handle there and then blow out the body. But you like to do it like a, a disc? Kind of, I kind of do. I don't know, I could put like a white stomach on him or something too, you know? Just a little bit more. Oh yeah, this is a nice piece. The, the more impact we as the glass community can have and, you know, really reshape the public view of what we do, you know, 
just because we blow glass and we make pipes doesn't make us bad people. And we want to really show that, you know, we can do this and raise money and do good things with it. And it's, it doesn't have to have that, you know, that stigma uh, or that stereotype associated with it because Basically, you know, we are creative people. That's what drives us. We do this every single day because we love what we do. And it's unfortunate that most people, you know, more people don't have that same opportunity. Most people get stuck in their, their dead end job and just don't, you know, they lose touch with what they should have been striving for that makes them really happy. And we view in the glass community, we found something that we truly love and it's something that we go after every single day. And it's, you know, a full time commitment for almost every single one of us and if it's not it's a it's a full time commitment with, that we're striving for that we're fighting to you know achieve that that status and, and be able to make work make a living without having to supplement some other way my uh, my company is torch control box the initials are tcb it also means taking care of business so we made the lights happen we made it happen i got a got a couple of nice pieces put together at the last minute and uh Hopefully we'll get some kids some better smiles, make, make some happy people. My name's Cash with Teddy Glass. I was one of the uh, participants, he participated last year. I was also the main buyer for all of the Chicago Project items that were donated by the artists last year. And uh, it was for a wonderful cause and anything I could do to help that. Um, and that's why I, I purchased all of the glass last year. And um, fortunate enough to be here this year myself hands-on meeting all the glass blowers and all the different artists and and also as well pick up again glass that's for a good cause anything I can do for for, for charity I, I like to jump on that as well I'm a firm believer in you know I don't want to say like the welfare system but like people need help you know I mean and I'm not one of those like turn my nose in the air and you know get a job people and you know people genuinely need help you know and if everyone doesn't try to do something to help people it's a sad world you know I mean people should help other people especially children I mean it's not you know the kids fault that their parents can't provide for them, you know, I mean, or do this or that, or in this case, it's a medical, you know, condition that they're born with, you know, I mean, it's, they can't help it, you know, so it's great to, I'm all about the, like, distribution of wealth to some extent, you know, I mean, if someone has something, if someone needs something that I have, I'm all about giving it to them, if I can afford to give it to them, you know, I mean, so, yeah, helping kids, I mean, you can't go wrong with helping kids. The industry has gone through a lot of growing pains and a lot of hiccups and some U-turns over the years. When I started back in the late 90s, the first shop I worked in had like 32 stations running two eight-hour shifts, every station full, every day, and people were begging for longer shifts. We were getting paid by the piece or hourly, depending on our position, and we had insurance and health care. And then some asshole sneezed and the whole industry shit in on itself and now we're just getting back to the spot where glass blowers can have insurance again like the only insurance the industry has is our friends like there's very few glass blowers that if they get injured don't have to put a fundraiser together they can just go and get their injury dealt with that's what i want i want to get back to a place where we can have big shops where people can express themselves and we can all work without fear of not having a net to fall back into. My daughter got attacked when she was a child and so many people stepped forward and helped pay for her surgery. Like, I'm about to fucking cry. Like, being able to give back, that's why I'm here, man. That's what we do. It's awesome to have Casto here, to have Coil here, you know, to basically just to have all my buddies, Johnny Walker and Brett from, from um, Broken Glass here. It just turned out huge this year. It's incredible to be in the moment and not think about something like that. But honestly, you know, just, just being a part of this has given me the opportunity to work with so many people 
that, you know, I, I couldn't imagine missing it. You know, it's just one of those things that as long as it's within my power, I'll be here every single year rocking it out, doing whatever I can to, to make it happen, tying as many blowers in with me and trying to, you know, pull out big projects. And um, between this year and last year, you know, I had a blast. I got to work with people and um, really throw some different ideas and just hand projects off. Here, do this, do that. Nah, uh, you do this, I'll do that. You know, it's just, it's a, it's a fun way to go about being creative. You know, giving control and handing that control over to somebody else and trusting that they will see a similar vision to you or find a way to use your, your work in their vision is, is a really incredible thing. I'm Broken Glass, Brett, you know, thank him, you know, from the bottom of my heart as much as possible, you know. Sometimes things get a little disorganized and coming into his place with all these people, it's got to be stressful. So, you know, we made everything happen. He's a great, great person, great individual as, you know, just a person himself and uh, open his doors, his facility at Unbroken Glass is just, I can't thank him enough. It's obviously vitally necessary to have sponsorships. You know, with this event, we're small, but trying to grow still, but the more you have donated, the less you have to spend to make the event happen. Therefore, in the long run, maximum donation can be made. I mean, it, if we have to spend all this money to get materials, you know, this or that, you know, whatever, that's, you know, less to be donated. So the sponsors are way, way on the top of the list of the important people. I mean, it just wouldn't happen without sponsors. Every person that sets up is like, I can help 10 kids, I can help 10 kids. So if we have all these people here, you know, that's more and more. And just for the event itself to be growing like that on that nature is awesome. You know, we started off real small, just barely, you know, a lot of things came out of my pocket and I'm proud to do that, you know. And to see it evolve and get larger and larger, the sky's the limit. I give away glass often, whether to a random person on the street that's sad or to an organization. And every time I make somebody smile, it makes me feel better. If there was an event like this every week, I'd never go home. <laughs>